Joke Vlog. 1985's The Coca-Cola Kid is a unique movie. Firstly, you want to watch this on Tubi TV over Amazon because the Amazon version, it's cropped, it's not widescreen, and it seems to be running at a gimped frame rate. I have no idea who supplied that shit to them, but Tubi TV has a better HD transfer of this available. So let's just get that out of the way. Second, this is an Australian movie that I don't think actually played in America, though it stars Eric Roberts, the most talented of the Roberts. Let me say guys, if you're making an independent film, there is no better performance for dollar than Eric Roberts. I've seen him in some stuff that looked like it was shot on an iPhone. The movie actually starts with a long text explaining how this was not done with the authority of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has distanced themselves. It sounds to me like some legal circumstance took place here. Uh, sued? I don't know. So Eric Roberts plays Becker, this American uh, executive fixer of sorts at the Coca-Cola company. He's flown into Australia to fix their dilemma. They are having trouble selling Coca-Cola. He learns that there's a region in Australia where there are no Coca-Colas for sale because some eccentric guy has his own soft drink and has essentially stopped colonization from America. Becker's given this assistant played by Greta uh, Scotchy. She seems to be all over him, but he's ignoring her very much focused on business. But there's two takeaways from this film. Firstly, I kid you not, Matthew McConaughey must have based his life on Eric Roberts in the Coca-Cola Kid because he, he has so channeled this performance in all of his movies. Watch this and you'll see Matthew McConaughey. At one point, Becker should have just said, all right, all right, all right. Our policies and strategies will be dictated by the needs and desires of the consuming public. Our Need company intends. And, and number two, out of nowhere. I mean, hell, it's, it's a, a fun romantic comedy of sorts. There, there doesn't seem to be a lot of cursing. And, and then, bam, Greta Scotchy gets the boobs out in a weird mother-daughter shower and it isn't the only time she's going to be doing this she's releasing the memories again and it, they're epic like unbelievable amazing breasts shit you know as rom-coms go there's some comedy here there's uh practically skinamax stuff happening at the latter half it it's kind of a tonal disconnect I thought the story was fun enough and it, it was a little more avant-garde than one could expect from an American rom-com with certain Australia personality inflected here and there. But the ending raises a lot of questions. I don't... Well, okay, spoilers. Did Greta Scotchy's dad die? I mean, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that... Uh, for most of the movie, we realize she's the poster girl of his soft drink, and that's who she was hiding from. She's hiding from her dad when she jumped in the cooler at the office. And okay, we, that wasn't much of a surprise, but he set fire to his factory, and there's no information on whether or not he's dead or is he missing. And then you see, like a week later, World War Three has started, and you got the little girl playing with mice. Like, okay, that's a little weird. Yeah, I give the Coca-Cola Kid two and a half out of four. Four stars like comment share follow subscribe von jog vlog is made possible by your support on patreon patreon.com forward slash born fry because f google